it's been revealed the disgraced BBC broadcaster Martin Bashir claimed racism and professional jealousy were behind accusations he fraudulently secured his infamous Diana interview. In an email sent to a BBC executive in 2020, Bashir wrote colleagues didn't like the fact that a second generation immigrant of non-white working class roots had secured a sit down with the princess. He then dismissed all claims of any wrongdoing as professional jealousy. But one year later, a former judge published a report uh, finding Bashir had in fact used deceitful behaviour to persuade Diana to open up and that the BBC had covered it up. Andy Webb, the journalist who first broke the story, told Talk TV he believes the corporation is guilty of much, much more. What I'm most interested in is what senior BBC executives were actually doing back in 1996, but more importantly, what they were doing in 2020, because the cover-up that I say now exists was uh, devised, planned, enacted by the people who are literally running the BBC today. And I think that is it's certainly something which concerns me, and I think would concern people more widely. The Beeb has so far spent more than £150,000 of taxpayers' money on legal advice in its attempt to block handing over the documents. But the corporation continues to insist that any allegations of acting in bad faith are simply wrong. And I'm going to insist that they are simply wrong. And Martin Bashir is simply wrong. And what really, really irritates me about this is that you're using racism as an excuse to, to cover up the fact that you've done something really, really wrong. Yeah. That you've used deceitful measures, deception, fraud, making up bank statements to try and persuade mm. Princess Diana to give this iconic, infamous interview that we could probably all quote one line from. And you got your interview, but you got it by deceitful means. Yeah. You've been caught and now you're saying it's racism. And what else irritates me is that when racism really happens, and it does happen at big corporations up and down the country, you've cried wolf. So people Spot who are on. really mm -hmm. going yeah, through exactly something it. will not be believed. And that makes me furious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and we all know that the BBC is a very right-on organisation. Yeah. And when Martin Bashir wrote that in an email to a senior management person saying, you know, you guys were all racist, the person receiving that email will have been so horrified yeah. and will have been paralysed by this email saying, oh, my goodness, Martin Bashir is accusing us of racism. That, as you said, so suddenly, you know, it's you can't look at the, the facts because he's using the exactly. race card Look and it's over outrageous there. Yep. and this let's not forget this story we know from documents recently william blamed the breakdown of the relationship between charles and diana on this interview not they were already separated but what he was talking about is whether they could be friends, friends yeah so he wasn't saying they would have got back together yeah. but he was saying they could be good co-parents and good friends mm -hmm. but this interview really sent diana quite mad with mm. paranoia because yeah. he was all these things he was saying and that's what and certainly Harry and William both think that the interview in some ways led to her death because she was so paranoid she wouldn't take secret service you know mm. or, or the you know the police advice because she thought they were bugging her and so on so the the effect the impact that Martin Shear had was huge. Yeah, massive. But if you had persecutory thoughts, which you already had, and then you're confronted with evidence, which wasn't evidence, exactly. which was fabricated, mm -hmm. then all you do is entrench those views, so therefore you believe you're right. Yeah. So I totally agree. I think what this did is it tipped her over the edge. Yep. And so then she believed that the establishment was against her, and of course we know the rest mm. of that story. Mm. This is a total misuse of trust, of ethics, of everything that you should stand for as a journalist. And I want to know, what did the BBC know, and when did, it, did they know it, and who knew it and the redacted stuff just makes no sense what are they hiding and this this actually goes back to trust in the corporation as well it's our money correct it's our money we're paying for this and they're squandering it by actually using it to cover up the truth but it, yeah it would it would help if the bbc gave a clue as to why that there might because some, sometimes we understand a redaction i mean if, if mm. brenda the tea person is mentioned casually in there <laughs> yeah then you know it's fair enough you take mm -hmm. her out of it in case she's implicated somehow um and the crazy thing about his you know 
th this was about my class or my race or whatever. Yeah. I mean, if there were ten of them who put this together, I'd get it. He could go, you're only picking... A there was only him. In he was the only person, yeah. literally, that was responsible and found to be responsible for the sort of malfeasance that had gone on in, in putting this report together. So in that respect, he's, he's kind of stuffed. But this is actually now about the BBC and about trust in the BBC, which is already in the gutter, I think, Isabel. It's not really getting any better any day soon. I think he's made a complete fool of himself with this claim. You know, I can't imagine that anyone gives it any credibility whatsoever. I mean, at the corporation at that time, you know, that would have been regarded as an incredible scoop. Which yeah. one of us yeah. journalists yeah. would have had an instinct to feel professionally jealous in a nasty <laughs> way? Oh, of course, you might be a little envious. Wow, I wish I'd got that scoop. You're not going to go, oh, I really resent you for getting that because of the colour of your skin. No. Come on, yeah. give me strength. Well, I mean, this is a guy who is desperate, Martin Bashir, yeah. because he feels his entire career has been defined now not by that interview in a good way, which it was defined uh, mm. positively before because he got this great scoop, but because the whole interview is seen to not only have been a fraud, but to have had a terribly, terribly damaging effect on human lives. But the yeah. idea that he was rehabilitated and became the religious editor... Yeah, I know. ..I find absolutely extraordinary. Yeah. What does that say about but the BBC's that, governance? I mean, that's part of the cover-up of the cover-up well, of the cover-up, exactly. isn't it? It Be just goes so deeply. Is there evidence in those emails that actually they knew uh, about some of this before they promoted him to the, the yeah. big, what was the bigger job as the head well exactly of the that and so, some of the details that are still coming out this evening like just before we were coming out I was reading some more of these thousands and thousands of documents mm. which shows some of the BBC lawyers bantering and joking amongst themselves um, saying oh well, you know, do you think we've lost our knighthood we're not going to get any gongs after this and all that sort of thing you know it was all a big joke yeah. so yeah, I think yeah, this yeah. story is going yeah. to is going to continue.